Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, where I am taking a look at this, what appears to be a standard SMLE. Of course it's not, and you probably figured that out from the title card already. This is a number 2 Mark IV Star rifle, which means it is one of the first really properly standardized British 22 caliber training rifle variants of the Enfield. Now, the British started, first adopted their first sub-caliber training rifle back, way back in 1883, and it was a conversion for the Martini Henry using an inserted tube uh, to rechamber, you know, to, uh, to neck down the, the barrel from 45 caliber down to 23 caliber, and it used the ubiquitous 297-230 Morris cartridge, which was a little bottlenecked center fire reduced power training cartridge. This, of course, was not going to last forever, and uh, starting in 1904, basically, they started adopting the 22 rimfire cartridge instead. And they went through a whole mess of confusing different models of 22 caliber trainers. So one of the things that the British did is they really hated throwing out rifles, and I think they must have also hated giving rifles to anybody else. So when guns became obsolete, or obsolescent, you know, when they had upgraded to the next pattern, a lot of the previous old models got converted into training rifles, or drill purpose rifles. And in the, when it comes to the training rifles, they had a whole bunch of different, confusing, designations, depending on what the pattern of the rifle uh, that had been converted was. So what we have here is the first really standardized one, which was uh, approved formally in 1921. And it was the rifle, comma, short, comma, 22 pattern of 1914. And it was adopted as the rifle, comma, short, comma, 22 inch, comma, RF for rimfire, comma, Mark IV. And uh, th this rifle would actually stay in service for decades, uh, be used into the 1950s, in particular by the Indians and the Australians, who never actually put the number four rifles into production. So they stuck with this conversion of the, the number one SMLE for their training rifles. Now, the conversion is kind of a little simpler than you might expect. And if you look at these, you might wonder, is this like missing some parts? So let me go ahead and show you what it's actually supposed to look like. Anytime you're trying to figure out something about an Enfield, the first place to look is always the socket here, the stock socket. And so what we see here is we have, uh, this has been partially removed or just heavily worn. It's an Enfield, well, 19-something production. But more importantly for our purposes, we have the designation here, Short 22 Mark IV Star. Now like I said, this started out with this really long designation. And in 1926, they changed the nomenclature, so just a couple years after it was introduced. And they changed it to the Rifle Number 2 Mark IV, which is a lot simpler than the whole Rifle Short 22 Inch R4 Mark IV blah 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 long thing that they had been using. Now the difference between the Mark IV and the Mark IV Star was the introduction of the magazine. Looks basically just like a standard Lee Enfield magazine with 22 stamped on the side. Sometimes you'll find that on the left, sometimes the right. In this case, it's actually stamped on both sides. But that magazine might lead you to suspect that this is some sort of cool repeating training rifle. You would be wrong. This is, in fact, a single shot rifle, and it has basically no feed ramp in it. You manually insert cartridges into the chamber one at a time, close the bolt, you're then ready to fire, and after you have fired, when you extract the cartridge, it just falls down into this empty magazine shell. That's all it is. They added that in 25 as a way to just catch the spent brass and keep it nice and conveniently right in here. Before that, the brass just fell out through the bottom of the magazine well. The conversion process required, of course, a new barrel, and then a couple changes to the bolt, and that's about it. The trigger mechanism was left completely intact, the magazine was left intact except for being hollowed out, removed of its follower and spring. Uh, and the rest of the receiver was also left intact. The bolt is marked 22 number 2, and if we look at the bolt face here, you can see that what they have done is uh, drilled out and then plugged the front of the bolt face, where there would normally have been a firing pin hole, and they've added an offset firing pin, because of course you have to have that offset in order to hit the rim of a rimfire cartridge. Now we can go ahead and remove the bolt head. 
There we go. The firing pin has been cut down, it's down inside there. And what it does now is strike this firing pin, or I should say the what used to be the firing pin. It's now kind of a striker. And it will shake, and we can pull this firing pin out. Wipe it off a little bit there. And this is just a second half of the firing pin. So it's not spring-loaded or anything. It doesn't really need to be, because this is just a, a hand-operated bolt-action rifle. And so when you put in a cartridge, that pushes it back. And when you pull the trigger, the striker and its spring power are going to hit that, push this firing pin forward, and fire the round. The extractor was then also modified to be a bit larger, so that it can actually hook over a, a 22 rimfire uh, extractor rim. And that is all there is to it. I should also point out, actually, the sights were not modified. So this is our standard uh, 200 to 2,000 yard sight. And instead, the rifle came with basically a conversion table. Uh, so when you wanted to actually shoot, you'd have to set the sight appropriate for a 22 caliber range. And that was, if you wanted uh, 25 yards, set the sight to 300. For 50, go to 450. For 100 yards, you go to 550. For 150 yards, you go to 725. And if you want to shoot all the way out to 200 yards with your 22 rimfire, you set the sight to 850. So I have this set for a 50 yard zero right now. This, of course, is the earliest really standardized training rifle that you're likely to encounter from the British. However, they would go on, of course, to have a whole bunch of other versions as well, because well, they're British and they need to have more patterns of stuff than just this one. So uh, stay tuned, and in the coming couple of weeks we'll be taking a look at two other versions of the 22 caliber training Enfields that were uh, improved and made better. So stick around for that. If you would like more information on this particular one, uh, there is a... well, you should take a look at the catalog page at Rock Island. Uh, that has their pictures and their description and their pricing, uh, or price estimate, and everything like that. You can get to Rock Island either by going directly to their website, I'm sure you can figure out what it is, or by going to ForgottenWeapons.com through the link in the description text below. Thanks for watching.